Hello everybody, welcome to the sound test room. Today we're going to take a look at the new um, DAW for iPad uh, MTS um, Studios, a multi-drag recording studio. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start with uh, a blank track. So I'm going to take you through various things you can do as quickly as possible. Okay, so first thing to do is create a new song. So you just hit song, new song, and it's done. Uh, now you'll see this is what you have. You have effects, return, your master controls, um, and stuff like that. But I'm going to take you through this step by step. So first of all, you're going to want to click probably. Um, so we're going to we have to create a click track. There's no click or BPM settings on the actual uh, interface. So first of all, we click this add track, and you can see audio track MIDI import audio MIDI file or click track. So we'll create a click track, and this gives us our options for our click track. We're going to leave it at 120 for 4. Okay, so okay, so there's our click track now. Now you'll see you have play and record. So if we pick play, there's our little click. Okay, so now this is our transport here. So we want to pull that back to the beginning. Okay, that's important. Now we're going to create another track now, and we're going to create another MIDI track, and we're going to call that drums okay so now we have a drum track now because i had this set up earlier it will already be mapped to, to the drums i should think so if we go over here a little bit further along past panning and the effects send okay that's uh, the pns there that's panning and effects and we can mute and solo there mtsi are the internal virtual instruments the midi it's, it's a general midi Okay, so we hit that there, and we can see that our drum kit is set on standard, and we can choose from uh, the various instruments inside the virtual MIDI. Okay, so that's cool. But we're already set on drum kit standard. So that's done, and now also I've got this uh, hooked up to the little Korg micro key. So now I have to um, set this up to accept MIDI. Okay, so we go through to studio here and to pre uh, yeah, uh, devices and MIDI input device I've got it set on the micro key okay that's fine though so that's done now hang on just a sec right all right sorry about that um, drums now we can't hear the drums yet this is because that the drum track is set on play we have to arm it to be able to hear it now it's not going to be recording anything yet but you can hear now that the micro key is now accepting midi from the what's it so so i'm just going to record a quick basic track with this now there's no uh, looping that I could find. Maybe there is, but I couldn't find any. But that doesn't matter for now. So what's going to happen now? Well, when I press uh, play, it's going to give me uh, the click track. So I'm going to use the click track as a counting. And then start to record uh, just the basic drum pattern. So I know it's quiet at the moment, but don't, don't worry about that. Right, okay, so... Now, if I press, if we don't forget to take your transport back to the beginning, or you'll be over here, somewhere thinking, where the, where the heck's my sound gone? And that should just play. Now, you can hear some uh, reverb is added there because on the effects return, there is a reverb. And if I switch that off you'll be able to hear the fact that this end works fine. Now, also what I liked about this is that when you hit a control, it mirrors the control just above, so you can see. You can see it, you know, so your finger's not going to be in the way. I thought that was quite a, really, uh, quite a nice touch, actually. So, there we go. We have our drums now. What we're going to do is if we um, hit this, it takes us into our editor. 
for that particular track. Now we can shorten the editor. We can make it smaller if we want to. And we can see different various parts. So that's cool. See, we can we can do this. So we don't need to have the thing over the whole page. You know, you can see it like this. Now, what will be different for you, from most people is that this won't give you like your normal doors. You can't see the waves and the MIDI files and that tracking along sort of thing. Think of it more like a tape recorder where you can't see it, but you can hear it, but you can edit it fine. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, we're going to quantize our notes so they're slightly slightly better. So if we if we select if we put select all there, there's our there's our thing that we've just recorded, and I want to um, I want to quantize that a bit. So let me see if I can remember how to do this and edit, and we go down to quantize. Now I'm only going to quantize to one eight because it was a very very simple pattern. So one eight no quantize, and if we apply, you should see them move a little bit. There you go, and now I should have hopefully the perfectly quantized beat. Okay, we have. So let's go, let's go take that back a little bit now. I'm going to um, re overdub that with some. Um, let me just press record so we can monitor. I'm going to overdub that with some hi hat stuff. Now this is important. If I was just to press record now, I would just overwrite what I've just done. Okay, what we're going to need to do is there's a little button here, as you can see, this little uh, monitor, punch in and punch out, that's for punch in and punch out recording, That's you want to get into that later. SOS here, which I, I presume is like sound on sound, so you're overdubbing. So that needs to be, that needs to be switched on if you're to hear your if you're to, re you know, you want to over, the, you want to put some hi hats and stuff in, and you still want to hear the bass and the snare that you've already just put in, so that's important as well. And we'll make sure our transport is back at the beginning again, and let's hit this. Now, we can switch that off again now because I'm not going to do any more overdubbing on that kit. So what we go down, we can open up and we can see where we are. Let's go back to the beginning. And there's our hi-hats been put in. Let's close this up a bit so we can see. There you go. So what I'm going to do now is exactly the same thing again. I'm going to edit. I'm going to quantize to um, one-eighth notes and apply and that should just fix that the, the, if there was any any problems with the high act should just fix that so right fine now we want to go to um <coughs> sorry i still got this blimmin cold i picked up over christmas now we're going to add a track and we're going to add one more midi track and we're going to call this MIDI track, uh, strings, okay, so now we've got some strings, now, let me just go over here to MTSI, and string ensemble one, so, and this is only because I was playing with it earlier and had stuff. particularly like that so let's pick some more synth strings here let's see what we've got synth strings two and we have some control for our envelope there so that's done so that's going to do so i'm now going to record some strings over my drum pad now remember i could take the click out and you wouldn't hear it, okay, but I need to click in at the moment still because I need to start playing when my pattern starts playing. So don't need SOS on, don't need anything else on. Make sure that your strings is armed for record or you won't say, you wouldn't even hear them. 
Okay, so all we need to do now is hit record again. Okay, so. Fine. Now, we should have... No. See, that this is what happens. You think you've recorded nothing, but it won't return. <coughs> it won't return when you've finished. Now it'll work. All right, now, so, so you ran through MIDI. That's a very basic MIDI. Don't forget you can use virtual MIDI too and then save the song later. What I'm going to do now is unplug the um, micro key. Okay. Oh, no, that still looks straight. And uh, we're going to record some audio. But first of all, I'm going to plug in um, iRig Pro, because that's what I'm going to use to record some guitar. So again, let's just get this. Plug in iRig Pro to there. Okay, that's okay. And... Grab hold of a guitar. Okay. Now, okay, so we've got Eric Plo's getting power. <coughs> you might be able to hear this through the headphone mic. But so, what we're going to do now is add track, audio track, and we're just going to call it guitar. Okay. So, now we have. Audio track, uh, it's mono, we can select mono or stereo. And if I pre press record, I can't hear a darn thing. Now, let's see. Let's see what we can do now to make this work. Input, no, it's not, it doesn't matter. Um, theoretically, this should be working now. So I just need to see where I'm going wrong. Oh, I'm getting it come through. Ah, now, see? This is good. You're not going to hear nothing until you hit this little button here, monitor. Okay? Because this is sending your, your, your... You'll be able to use live monitoring now, and you'll be able to use some of the fantastic effects that are included in this when you record your guitar now. So a couple of things here. When uh, If you have a guitar pedal... You can insert the guitar pedal before the eye rig, and then you'll have all your distortion or whatever effects you like. And your, or... But I'll just plug the guitar in clean. Now, if we want to monitor this with effects, we go over here, and you see these three these three little boxes here. This is where like you can choose your instruments if you're using MIDI, but you can add two effects as well to MIDI. Now, let's see what we've got here. If we press this button here, this gives us all the great effects. So... Here's the multi now. When this gets into app, obviously that, that those effects will appear there. Um, we have automated fading, chorus, compressor, deesser. We have a guitar amp, so let's select the guitar amp. See, and if we hit it again, we can. See, combo UK. So you can set that up any way you like. Now, one point here. I'm just going to add some uh, chorus as well. Okay, done. Now, I can take that down. It won't affect my input levels. Just good for monitoring. Now, um, so that's all I'm going to do. So now you've seen how to set up the audio for mono and the effects. Now, 
if you just click it again, you'll keep getting. If you say, "Oh, I don't want the chorus in there. I can't. I don't I can't, I want another effect. I can't buy." You know, if you long hold, it will give you the options again. So that's an important thing to point out. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's just make sure our transports at the beginning. Let's leave everything so make sure our uh, clicks, drums, and strings are playing, and our guitar is armed to record. And let's go. And at this point, it's good to be ready to go because I wasn't. <laughs> okay, now if we had SOS on now, we could over overdub the guitar on that track, I think. But let me just uh, get my finger on that A minor and arm the, re arm the record. So I'm re leaning through the tripod. Right, so, okay, that worked all right. And what we're going to do is just slap some bass in there. So another bass guitar, so we're going to create another audio track to do our bass guitar. So that's plugged in now. <coughs> oh, such a, got such a cold. Um, right, okay, add track, audio track. Bass. Okay, so let's just hit that there so we can monitor. Okay, now I can't f work out a way to rehearse this, by the way, without actually recording it, but hey, it doesn't really matter. You can always go back and over record it if you make a mistake. So we're all set up again, monitor, bass, record, we've got all the other tracks playing. So let's just, again, make sure our transport is back at the beginning and... Now, let's unplug iRig. Now, you know, like, if you've watched a couple of the other videos, you'll see that I can use iRig to record any mono feed, so synthesizers and stuff like that work great. So I'm not going to add anything else to this now. I'm just going to have a quick browse through different things. So here we go. So we have uh, clicks. Now, we can take our clicks out. Let's switch our click off now. Okay, and we can start to sort of get a better idea. Now, I might want to add some effects to the bass. Well, let's, yeah, what do I, I, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Now, we have a noise gate. Look at all these. Oops. Let's add, just to see what it's like. Let's add pseudo stereo. Not sure what that'll do. I'll take it back to the beginning. And let's add some um, compression to the drums because that's gonna gonna make it sound better, isn't it? So. Oh, that's much better. If I run through a few more, we can they can change the the but the display to tempo times signature editor song editor. And a very cool thing is if I go into this now and I go into um, I think when am I going? Let me go back a bit. Okay, we can. See, I think we can only, yeah, no, obviously, of course. 
let me just show you something else. Okay, so I'm gonna close, close this. If we go to our MIDI strings, okay, there's our, our, our MIDI our MIDI editor there. Um so hang on a sec. If we press score, you'll be able to see the score for the string part that I played. Obviously it's not drums, but that would put the drum thing. And there's just the basic but score is really cool as well. So you can see what you've actually played. That was one of the other things I wanted to show you. But these are the stuff you can dig into later. Um, effects Return and Master Effects. So you can... There's a limiter on the master straight away. Okay. Um, and a reverb setup for the overall the overall mix. Uh, it has some nice controls. Obviously the mix, the reverb time, pre-delay, which is cool beans. Room, chamber, hall and plate. So that's your, your general sort of over what's it so we've added some compressions to the drums we've added nothing to the string so let's see if we can add some there's a de an echo an eq master limit oh uh, master limiter noise gate phaser pseudo stereo reverb i don't know if it's the same reverb probably is yeah the same reverb you can add so let's just uh, carry on looking a uh, saturator a tremolo and a tuner a tuner there you go and vibrato so fantastic effects available, great control, quite easy to set up and get going. So you could dig quite deep. I, I don't, I'm not sure if you're how many tracks you're limited to, maybe 16, I'm thinking. But hey, you know, I mean, I think it's pretty cool. You can, like I said, you have to follow this and you'll be okay. You'll get started quite quickly. It didn't take me too long. I, I, I missed a few things and you know, I was a bit confused of where the tempo was. So it's in your click track sort of thing. But anyway, guys, um, that's um, MTS Studio, non multi track recording studio um, for your iPad, which is very, very cool indeed. I like it. And I think I like it because it's different, you know, and it takes me back. It takes me back. Uh, okay, guys, so I hope you find this useful and informative, and I'll see you later.